I'm so glad to see you. Have you had a good day? I have a book to read for you tonight. I think it's one you're going to like. It's one that my daddy had, and my daddy used to read it to me because his mom used to read it to him. I think you're going to like it. It's called The Woods That Came Back. Here we go. Once upon a time, there was a man who wanted to build himself a house. So he looked about and he saw a little round hill with a beautiful wood on top. Well, that's just the place, he said. I'll cut down that wood and I'll build my house. There. He didn't remember that the wood was full of beautiful living things, birds and insects and rabbits and squirrels and butterflies and even lovely caterpillars, as well as flowers and grasses and moss, not to speak of the lovely trees themselves and the seeds and the bulbs under the earth. And so he began to cut down the trees. As he cut, the birds flew away from the sound of his axe and the squirrels leapt from the trembling trees and all the flowers shook with fear. while the rabbits and the caterpillars and the snails and the spiders chased each other down the hill, away from the man's noise. Bit by bit, the wood fell, and the bushes and the ferns and the flowers were destroyed. As for the poor fox, neither he nor the ants could find anywhere to hide. Tree trunks lay scattered over the ground and the leaves faded and died until there was only one small tree left. And on that, all the birds tried to rest, but there was not enough. There was not enough room. And a lot of them had to fly round and round and round and round in the air and they grew very tired. But at last, even that tree was cut down and the birds had to fly away and the man stood in the middle of the destroyed wood and he was very happy. And then he built his house very quickly with a bright pink roof and heaps of windows so that he could see the views. You would have never guessed that there had ever been a wood there. And now, said the man to his wife as they sat opposite each other on the first day in their new house, now, ha, 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 we'll be happy to live happily ever after. But it was not to be. Little did they know that even while they sat there, things were happening. The very birds were whispering everywhere of the great plan. All the living things who had been chased from the wood held a large meeting. Everyone was present from the fox and the woodpecker down to the spider and, and even the ant. They decided to chase the man and his wife from the house. If we each do our best, said the spotted caterpillar, I'm sure we'll be successful. So the fox ran off with their hens out of the yard and the woodpecker 
pecked at the wood of their beautifully new chairs and completely spoiled them. The birds sang outside the window all night through so that the man and his wife could get no sleep. It was a terribly loud noise. Meanwhile, the snails left their trail all over the polished floors. And the spiders, they covered the house with webs everywhere you could look. There was just no sense cleaning anything. Even the logs of wood refused to burn when the man's wife tried to light the fire. Nettles and thistles sprouted up through their new carpet, and yes, even into the bedroom where the man and his wife lay asleep in bed. The brushes grew up and thrust themselves into the open window so that they could never be shut. No, not even when the wind blew fiercely. And worst of all, their clothes were always covered with ants and beetles and caterpillars and moths. At last, the man and his wife could stand it no longer. Ah! And they ran right away and they left the house forever. And then the trees began to grow. And then they grew and grew and grew and grew until at last the house was buried and disappeared. And the lovely little round hill again had a beautiful wood on top full of happy living things. The end. Good story, huh? I love you to pieces.